No, at long last, I'm ready to uh, start putting clay on the on the full size model using the enlarging machine. This is a simple process. Uh, I really just put the uh, model pointer somewhere that seems important on the model, some place that's uh, 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 a good reference point. And then I go over to the armature and I build the clay out till it just touches where the target uh, pointer is, is. Now, ideally that target pointer will be you know, some fraction of an inch away from the armature, you know, maybe a half an inch, inch or something. Uh, so I'll just build a, a little hillock of clay out there till it just touches the um, target pointer and then move over and do the same thing to another point nearby. And I get a little cluster of points like that. I'll, I'll, I'll stop a minute and fill in between them and then I'll have an area of the surface of the full-size model um, enlarged in the right relative place uh, in space. So the whole thing is really just the endless uh, repetition of those steps uh, uh, to build out a copy. Now, there are some times in which you'd want to do this very precisely. Your, your precise points would be just a fraction of an inch apart and you'd be making a very exact uh, enlargement of the original. This isn't uh, really the case for me because I made the original just as a sketch, and it's really primarily to locate things, uh, anatomical features and so on, in the right spots on the full-size <coughs> enlargement. So I'm working to a somewhat uh, sloppier standard uh, and intend to do the final two notes on the full-size piece. Uh, if you were doing you know, a custom enlargement for some customer, you wouldn't do it this way. It would be quite a bit more time-consuming because you'd be uh, scrupulously getting every you know small fraction of an inch square exactly right. This is really just a lot of the same thing over and over. So I'm going to motor through it all at very high speed and get on to um, uh, the second phase of this, which is going to be tuning up the full-size sculpture and then uh, casting it and coming up with the final model. So most of the features are uh, in place, uh, at least roughly now, and I'm, um, uh, I'm actually simultaneously doing some points and uh, uh, and now sort of freehand changing things that didn't look right. Some of it looks fine when it's uh, 18 inches tall, is like obviously wrong when it's full size. So it looks like it's another day now. I think that took a good part of the day to uh, get up to this point. Uh, now it's mostly not the pointing machine at all. It's mostly just freehand uh, changing things and cleaning, cleaning things up. It's surprising how, how different it is full size. Things that are just glaringly obvious when it's full size, you don't even notice when it's little. But anyway, so I'm uh, important to keep it wet, by the way. Uh, I put quarts and water on this over the, the day or two. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, it's all fairly minor things now. There are some anatomical features that were just totally off, like, like her shoulder. I couldn't get her shoulder right over and over and over again. And, and finally, uh, finally, I think I nailed it at the end. Um, but we're getting close now. So we're really coming down the back stretch now. Um, this, I, I guess, the enlarging and modeling stuff actually ended up taking me like. 
a good chunk of three days. Um, I'm surprised it took so long. It didn't seem like it, it would. Uh, I knew I, I knew the legs were too long, and I was going to have to shorten them up. So I'm, I'm raising up the base, and uh, but other than that, it's it's largely complete now, um, and ready to cast. Um, just a, a, a lot of little tune-ups, and again, even this is a bit of a sketch because I'm going to uh, be copying this into marble, and uh, and there will be further adjustments as, as it becomes marble. But it's it's getting more and more like the finished product as I move along. So my friend uh, Lee Moore Gasca, the uh, the painter, um, was sort of following along. You know, I sent her texting her little photographs of this as I went, and very helpfully offered that the shoulder was totally a cockpit. It was just wrong, and. Uh, she sort of helped me out by pointing out things that were just wrong. Um, that's really hard to find, um, is because you can once you make once you do something wrong, you can look at it wrong for ages and, and just not see it. So here it is, ready to cast. Um, uh, casting is going to be a, a process of uh, laying on a thin coat of plaster first just to make sure everything is covered and then uh, glomming it on thicker uh, to make something that's strong enough to hold its own weight. Um, everybody's probably seen this before and we went through it with the, uh, the little one so I'm going to just go through this at super high speed because it's uh, it's just you know repetitious after a while. So here's the base coat going on. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm putting on with a brush. Some people flick it on. I, I find a brush is just as good. Uh, now this is a, a thicker coat. And finally, I guess I had three coats on here. It's got to be pretty strong because it's a very large thing. I had a panel of uh, styrofoam fastened on the back to uh, give something for the plaster edge to go up against. I took that off. Now I'm ripping out all the uh, styrofoam. And the clay, everything I can reach from here, which is which is most of it. That easel was um, uh, was built in. That's what the uh, styrofoam uh, armature was all fastened to. Um, so, so I'm going to reuse that. You'll see me reuse that uh, for the finished plaster. But uh, I'm just taking as much weight out of it as I can before I pick it up and and move it. And there we go. It's all done. I always think, wow, I'm almost done. And I forget <laughs> all, all the other things take like, you know, as long as making it. So I hear it is laying down on the bench. I'm just stripping out all the, the old armature and clay and stuff, uh, cleaning it up. And, and you know, now, of course, the task is going to be to fill it up with uh, plaster. So I have a you know, permanent, firm thing to work on. So I'm just uh, uh, stripping all that stuff out. And, this stuff's actually kind of fun to watch high speed for me. I, uh, you know, it takes forever when you're doing it, but then it's kind of fun to see it all just like zip, 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 come together. I'm brushing it out to sort of get all the uh, clay and garbage out of there. You know, little stuff sticking to the plaster, and uh, uh, I'll put on some mold release. I'm going to stand it up and carefully uh, uh, put Vaseline all over the inside of it so it uh, attaches mold release. Then I'm going to lie it down and put a first coat of, uh, of, of plaster in there. After the first coat, I'll lay some uh, chicken wire and stuff in there for strength and continue to fill it up. Um, it takes a lot. This is like many, quite a few pails of uh, plaster to fill this thing up. I should have put a little more effort into that styrofoam wall. I knew better. Um, uh, I didn't have it tightly secured enough, and as minute it got a few inches of uh, plaster in there, it started to leak and ran plaster all, you know, it didn't get so much all over the workbenches. It got, kind of went down into the workbench and got in the cabinets and stuff underneath. What a mess. But um, it serves me right, because I knew you know, uh, that the, the pressure when you, when it, 
you have something deep like that, there's a lot of pressure behind that plaster, you know, because it's like a foot high of plaster. Um, but anyway, no, no real harm done. So I, I'm just, uh, this is the first bucket or so, and, and then I'm, I'm going to put a bunch of uh, chicken wire in there, and the chicken wire will make it really strong. Chicken wire or wire lath or anything like that uh, makes uh, plaster and cement incredibly strong. I actually knew a guy who made a 50-foot sailboat out of uh, cement and basically chicken wire. It wasn't literally chicken wire. It was some kind of other lath. But it was only about a half an inch thick, the whole of that boat. And it was uh, stronger than a 50-foot wooden sailboat would have been. And you, if you hit it with a sledgehammer, it was possible to punch a hole in it, but you couldn't break it. Uh, it was just unbelievably strong. So chicken wire is always a good thing. So I laid in a little more plaster on top of the chicken wire, and I left a little dish down because it doesn't need to be fully solid. And, and there we go. It's all done. This is, uh, this is it. Time to take it out. I didn't mention it, but I reused that wooden easel from uh, that the armature was uh, fastened to. I drilled a bunch of drywall screws into it and left them sticking out an inch or inch and a half, and then set it into the wet plaster so that it would be really one with the uh, uh, with the plaster model. So here's the fun part: satisfying to do and really fun to watch at high speed. I just love. <laughs> I don't know why. I never get tired of watching plaster chunks fall off at high speed. So I'm just uh, knocking away all the mold. You can see it wasn't all that thick. It was like an inch, maybe an inch and a half. Some places it got thick, but most places it's really, it really wasn't very thick at all. Um, actually, there were a couple of spots where uh, it was alarmingly thin, uh, the plaster, three-eighths of an inch or half an inch in a, in a few little spots where I somehow miscalculated and lost sort of mental track of of how far below the, uh, the plaster level the actual sculpture was. But uh, no harm was done. It all worked out fine. I did this all at an angle. Those easels are all tilted back, I don't know, it's 10 degrees or something. But I actually ended up not really liking that. And uh, for all the effort of making everything slant, uh, I ended up propping it up so that it was vertical. Uh, to start the carving. So, um, uh, you know, these things do evolve, you know, in the course of making something. Um, as many years as I've been doing this, I, I would think that my ability to envision exactly what I want to make and then to simply make it would be uh, better than it is. But um, But no matter how much I plan at each phase, uh, it looks different to me. Like um, as a miniature, it looked one way, and then blown up to full size. I'm like, hmm, well, that doesn't look quite right. And so then the full size clay wasn't quite an exact uh, enlargement of the of the miniature plaster. And I'm I'm guessing that uh, once I get this out uh, to work on outside, it's uh, the finished stone will be a little different uh, than the plaster full size here. It gives me uh, new admiration for a lot of those 19th century guys who, who did their sculptures entirely in like one quarter scale or in, with really large sculptures, sometimes in one sixth or even one twelfth scale, and then had them blown up uh, uh, by craftsmen and got exactly what they wanted. Uh, it's really amazing, like until you try doing it, um, it's uh, you don't realize how impressive that is. I'm counting the uh, shirt changes, and it looks like that took five days, uh, longer than I would have thought. Uh, spent out over five days to do the um, armature and the enlargement and the um, uh, casting it and demolding it and everything. So it does, it does end up taking some time. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, this is a really exciting point now because the next thing is to start actually carving the stone. We're going to uh, set up the pointing machine and start chipping away at some marble. See you next time.